I just want to thank the band first of all because just imagine like because they, they do this for Jesus first of all you know but I can't imagine like we're up here and you know no offense but like but it's because of Jesus if they weren't doing it for Jesus they would look for satisfaction in you guys like oh but I just want to thank them and Nico the, the drums Brandon over there doing the lyrics you know my dog sometimes he messed up but it's, it's all good it's for Jesus but yeah I just want to thank them and all the leaders that pour into you guys like you know we love Jesus first and then we love you guys if we didn't love Jesus first you know then we look for validation satisfaction all these other things you know but it's all about Jesus but join me in a word of prayer before we start Father I thank you for every soul here listening right now Jesus I call for your Holy Spirit to help me do this Lord and that I just get out the way because I can't do nothing. It's the Holy Spirit in me that will do these things, Father. I pray for peace all in this auditorium right now. And that they just, I pray for ears to hear and eyes to see. And that they can leave and, and never be the same. I pray for freedom. I pray for you to open heaven down on us right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So if you guys don't know already, we're talking about peace. You know. If you guys are taking notes, I'd appreciate if you guys took notes and take out your phone or anything like that. But first scripture we're going to go to is John 14, 27. John chapter 14, verse 27. And peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That was Jesus speaking, you know, and I just want to tell a story real quick. Have you ever got, have you guys ever had something and it's like, when you get it, you're like, how did I ever live without this before? You know, like you get it and you're like, man, like some of y'all have your phone or a, a special person or something. You're like, how could I have ever lived without this before. For me, it's probably like, when I was thinking about it, it's out of Jesus, but I wanted to use a, you know, an earthly story to tell the heavenly message. So, my car. I'm like, man, how could I, how did I live without that? You know, I was just having rides with people like this. They pick me up and stuff like that. But my car is something that I was like, how did I live without this before I got it? And the same thing is with Jesus. You know, if you don't have Jesus right now, guarantee you, you don't know what you're missing out on. But to the people that do have Jesus, they're like, how did I ever live without you? You know, how did we ever live without him? And he says right here, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you is not like the world gives. Do you guys know what the world gives? Do you know the peace that the world gives? It's really temporary satisfaction. You know, in a, in a person, in a person or in sex or this website or all these sins, we, we, everybody there's a void in our hearts, you know, and we're looking to fill it up with peace. And anything I say today is not to condemn you because there is forgiveness. You know, the person you are right now is not going to be the person you are, you know, if you choose to change. Jesus came and, you know, he did die for the forgiveness of our sins, but it doesn't stop there. It's for you to change your whole lifestyle. This thing with Jesus is not about just receiving. It's also about becoming. You know, so God gives you all this forgiveness, all of your sins, all the things that he's forgiven you about. He gives you all this forgiveness. And then you start to become forgiveness. And then you start to forgive others who did you wrong. Have you guys ever had somebody that did you wrong before? You're like, God, how can I forgive them? They did this. I, they're my best friend. Like, Jesus said, forgive them how I have forgiven you. Jesus says, forgive all people. Like your father has forgiven you. And if you don't forgive, my father will not forgive you. God is saying, like, I forgive you of all these things. He's not telling you to do anything that's super crazy. He's just telling you to do what's already been done to you. He's giving you so much forgiveness, so you start to become forgiveness. People in your school. So let's say, this is in a perfect world, let's say everybody in here is perfect, okay? But in, the, in your schools, there's people who do not have peace, you know, and they're, they're looking for it in different places. You know, and, and, and probably sex. Or, and the world has different views on what to tell you, but, and the church wants to be silent, but the church is not going to be silent. You, know, you only hear one point of view from the world, but you got to hear God's point of view with these things. There's a reason he says not to. It will leave you empty. It will leave you wanting more. But God, the only eternal person, his peace 
we were in the leader, we were in the, uh, before we came, we were in groups. And Alex, you said this, I don't know if I'm gonna get it right, but you said the difference between peace and happiness is happiness will go, but peace is forever. And I was like, yo, that's good, man. I need to get that one right there, you know? And it's true, because peace is forever. Peace, Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Jesus Christ is eternal, he is God. He gives you peace that will last forever. You know, and then my next, I want to give you my, this next verse. John 16, 33. Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. People like to think, oh, if I become a Christian, or if I become a believer in Jesus, all my problems are going to go away. No, it's false. There might even be more problems. But like Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Take heart. Because in this world, you will have tribulation. You will have friends that backstab you in your back. You will have uh, 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 someone you thought that you love, and they cheated on you. You will have depression, anxiety. You can't pay bills. Your, your parents divorced. You will have all these things that happen. But Jesus said, take heart. I have overcome the world. It's about Jesus and his peace that he gives to you. But look, if you don't have Jesus' peace, you'll look for something else. you look for it in something else. Oh, my parents are doing this. I got to, yo, let's go do this. Let's go do that. Call up somebody. Or you go, just think about what you did. Think about the things you've done when you just fell down. And you, you needed to get away. In this whole world, teenagers right now, you know, they're just trying to get away. Like I have a friend, I've been trying to give, give, give him Jesus and you know, he says, man, smoking weed is my problem, man. And I'm like, why do you smoke, bro? Listen, Jesus gave you that peace. And he's like, dude, I don't even smoke it. Just, I, 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 it's not like I'm even smoking to get high. I'm smoking to get by. And I'm like, yo, try Jesus, man. We're sometimes we're scared to try Jesus. You know, he says, I'm not even smoking to get high. I'm smoking to get by. There's, listen, the world is going to always have problems. Even if you come to Jesus, if you don't come to Jesus. But Jesus will give you a solid foundation to step on. He will give you, he's the rock. When you don't have Jesus, you, you, you'll be forced to live by your circumstances. You know, anything that happens, you'll, you'll go this way, oh, I'll go this way, you know, and then you would just have to be forced to live by your circumstances, not by Jesus. You know, God is there with you. It's not like we're talking about somebody who's not all powerful. It's not like we're talking about the creator of all your souls right now. What is something he cannot do? Every Christian, can I get a witness? Is there any believers in the house? Is there any believers in the house? We have all. Listen, we have all a taste of the goodness of God. Like I said, how could I live without you? And I will never go back. And you should never go back. But the enemy tries to attack us. You know? So I like to, I want to use this uh, story. In a marriage, in a marriage, they get married, you know? Um, there's a part where they say, till death do his part. There's a part that says, in sickness and in health. You know? So when, when one person gets sick, the other, you know, will pick, pick up for them. The other person will help them. You know, say the husband gets sick, the wife will take care of him. Say the wife gets sick, the husband will take care of him. And there's some peace right there. Because that person is there with you and helping you. It's the same thing with Jesus. When you're down, you call out to him. You say, Jesus, please help me. This is happening in my life. But you got to have faith. The Bible says that without faith, you cannot please God. You know, he wants faith, just baby-like faith, child-like faith. You know, and maybe we're not going on through a bunch of crazy stuff in life right now. But as you guys get older, I'm telling you, take this with you. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. You can't find peace in anything else. Nothing else. No drugs. No amount of sex. No amount of money. No amount of, of, of your career fulfillment. Like, you have a career and you're fulfilling it so good. And you're just on top of the world. No amount of that stuff can ever give you peace. You know, it's the people that says, it's the people that have a whole bunch of money. They say, money cannot buy happiness. It's not us that don't have Lamborghinis outside. It's the people that have Lamborghinis outside. They have everything they want. They have a yacht. And they're the ones that say, money can't buy happiness. We all know celebrities. They're not actually happy. They, there's just always things. You're like, how could they do that? How could they kill themselves? They have the whole world. That, does, that doesn't give you peace. The devil gives you the whole world. Listen, 2 Corinthians chapter, 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, the God of this world, the Bible calls the devil the God of this world, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. He has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. I've been in church my whole life, you know, and I, I was blinded until Jesus opened my eyes and now I see life completely different. 
I value life so much more because the person that gave me life, the person that reveals me life is so important. You know, but when you're living away from God, away, you know, you're, you're sinning all the type of ways and you're living in death. But look, I want to show you guys five ways to, to, to have peace. You know, I want to go to Romans 8, 6. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. So Romans 8, 6 says the mind governed by the flesh, and for the flesh we can say like our, our selfish desires, our sinful nature. We can say all these things is the flesh, you know. But it says the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace, the Holy Spirit. When your mind is governed by the Holy Spirit, there is life and peace. Tell your neighbor, do you have peace? Tell your neighbor, do you have peace right now? Tell your neighbor, do you have peace right now? Tell your neighbor, do you have peace right now? All right, listen. Now we can say governed means to rule over with authority and control. So it says the mind governed by the flesh is death. And we can say governed means with authority and control. Some of you guys, you guys have a parent, you know, which, which govern over you, tell you what to do, this and that. Sometimes we hate that, right? But let me tell you this, just a side note. Your parents love you. Okay, there's, a, there's, there's always a story, we all know, there's people in foster care who don't have kids, don't have, who don't have parents, there's people who only have one parent, they don't have both parents, and sometimes those, those kids, they, it sucks, but those kids, they go to different outlets to, to find peace, to find love, to find joy, because they didn't have both parents, the way God created things to be, they didn't have those parents. You know, and sometimes they're depressed. Sometimes they have anxiety. Sometimes they go, like, like I said, two different outlets to find things like, God, why didn't my parents love me? Why didn't my parents do this and that? So there's that. But listen, some of us, we have parents that love us. Some of us, we have parents that pour into us and tell us not to do this for the sake of love. They love you. They've been through life for so long. You know, they've been through life. They've been, they've been through the fake friends. They've been through the breakups. They've been through all these things to help you. So that's just a sign note to listen to your parents. And just like this, like I said, foster care kids or people that, who don't have parents, it sucks. But those, those, that example is just like an example for us when we don't have God. When we don't have God, we were confused. We don't know our purpose. We don't have peace. We look for different outlets. We look for this and that. We look for love in people who don't, who's not going to give us love, who just manipulate us. But when you have God, it's like having both your parents. He's there. To tell you the right way to go. He's there to tell you these things. Because number one, he is all knowing. He knows your future. He knows your future. Earlier, earlier in my walk, you know, I was like, earlier in my walk, I'm like, God, I like this girl. And he already said no. Okay? I was like, what do you know, bro? But I'm, and then the thought came to my head. He knows the future. Everybody, if you if you haven't been with if you haven't like dated somebody before, but if you have dated somebody and then you broke up, think about how horrible that breakup was. Think about how much stuff went through that breakup, and you're like, I'm never gonna go to that breakup again. I'm never gonna go to that person again. But and now imagine somebody. Oh no no! Imagine your future self said, "Don't date this person. This is how it's gonna go." Your future self, he already went through the breakup, and he says, "Don't go through this." It's going to be terrible. It's not going to be. Listen to me. I'm your future self. I already went through it. He's like, but I love them. Like, you're talking to your future self, telling you you guys are going to have a horrible breakup or a horrible divorce. So listen to God. I mean, he knows the future. Trust is just faith. Things look good right now. You know, but you don't know what's going to happen 10, 10 years of the road, five years, maybe even one year of the road. There's many people that died this last year. They did not think they were going to die. You guys understand that? You guys understand right then? Amen. Amen. But look, the, the mind governed by the flesh is death. Now, what does, what, is the, what does the flesh look like? In Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21, Apostle Paul says this, The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, Fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and likes I have warned you before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, there's probably those things you're like, man, Chris, I did that yesterday. Man, Chris, I did that last week. Listen, there's forgiveness in the blood of the Lamb. The Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin for us. So all the stuff that I just mentioned, 
Jesus took that on the cross for you to give you his righteousness. That's a beautiful thing, man. Don't let it, don't let it ask God for understanding how that works. But it says the mind governed by the flesh is death. And this is what the flesh is. So like sexual morality, the stuff you be watching on, on the websites or a person that you really love and all your emotions are up and up and when your mind is governed by that stuff. You know, there's some people that just cannot stop thinking about sex. There's some people that just cannot stop thinking, you know, that's your mind being governed by that. And now that's all you want to do and you have no peace because you can't get it and you look for it in this and that person and now your heart's broke. Jesus says things for a certain reason. God says things for a certain reason. Hated, hatred is an act of the flesh. Some of us, we hate people. Some of us, they do things to us, you know. But when your mind is governed by that, man, there's no peace and joy in that. They can say their, they can say that person's name, and then you, all, and then all of a sudden you just, you just turn like your whole mood changes because they said their name. Jealousy, fits of rage, drunkenness. Listen, you know, maybe you guys aren't drinking right now, you know, but there's people like their mind. There's people, their mind is governed by drinking. Like it says, the mind governed by the flesh is death. What are the acts of the flesh? Is one is drunk, drunkenness. You know, some people their mind is just governed by drinking. And when people drink, they turn into a whole completely different person. So now, you're being controlled. It's the definition of governed. To rule over something with authority and control. When you're drinking, and then you get drunk, now you're controlled by these things, you're controlled by this and that, and, and you're acting out of character. God doesn't want you to, to, to intake something that will make you like not be able to control yourself. He does not want you to do these things. And like you said, those people who do this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Listen, God is the judge, Satan is the prosecutor, and Jesus is the lawyer that will win any battle. But you have to game that. If I gave all of you guys, like, uh, oh snap. But look, if I gave all of you guys a gift right here, like there's a gift for every single person in here, like right here, there's not, so don't be happy, but there's like a gift right here. When does that gift become yours? When you all run over here and kill me for it. You know, so same thing with Jesus. He gave you the gift of eternal life. He gave you the gift of freedom in Christ. He gave you the gift to, to not be controlled by sin anymore. He took that away from you. But it's not yours until you go and get it. Say, Jesus Christ, I really want it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, I really want it. Now look, the second part of Romans 8, 6 but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Now Galatians 5, 22 to 20, 23 says the fruits of the spirit. Now we all probably know the fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such thing is no law. So Romans 8, 6, the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Let your mind be governed by joy, peace, patience, kindness. Think about these things. Don't be ready. Don't be ready to like fight somebody because they said you're ugly. Don't be ready to fight. Don't be ready to fight people because they said, "Oh, you look like this," or they, they, they made fun of you, or they, like give, show them Jesus. That's another um, opportunity to show them God's forgiveness. That's another opportunity to show them the fruits that you have. Let your mind be governed by faithfulness and goodness and self-control. Some of us we don't have self-control. But you have to want self-control. You have to want Jesus to do that work in you. You know, you can't just want something. You can't just want to make it to the NBA, but you don't put no work into it. You know, you can't just want to be the best at your job, but you don't really put in the work for it. You don't want to learn these things. It's the same thing with this. If you want self-control, this is what's going to happen. God's not going to give you self-control. But you're going to pray, God, give me self-control, and then he's going to give you a situation. He's going to give you a situation to act out self-control. You're going to say, God, give me peace. He's going to give you a situation where, let's use Brendan. He's driving, and then someone cuts him off, and then he starts to snap. But he doesn't. He would never do that, you know what I'm saying? But he gives you situations. <laughs> he gives you situations to change. He's not just going to give you it. You pray, for, you pray for confidence. He's going to put you on the stage. You pray for it. You pray for it to, 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 to change somebody's life. Lord, like, Lord God, help me pour into somebody this week. Somebody's gonna, there's a situation that's gonna pop up and you're in, you're all, you're in, you're able to help that person. Let your mind be governed by that. That's the first way to keep 
to, to have peace. Let your mind be governed by the, the spirit. And don't let your mind be governed by this flesh. You know, you always want this. You always want that. There's no self-control. You're always thinking about this or that person lusting. That's not, that's not self-control. Let your mind be governed by these things. That's one. Walk by the spirit. Number two, to keep your peace and have peace. Pray about everything. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It says, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God will transcend all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Pray about everything. There's, listen, there's no right way to pray, okay? You pray what's in your heart like you talking to a friend. You know, pray what's in your heart. There's no right way to pray. You pray what's in your heart. Say, Jesus. Help me follow my, help me listen to my parents. Jesus, help me do this. Jesus, help me do that. He wants a relationship right now. Forget all that religious religion. He wants a relationship. A relationship. Just like, you know, your friend, you guys hang out. You talk to them however you want. You're, you are completely yourself with your friend. Because there's no judgment. It's the same thing with Jesus. It's the same thing with Jesus. There's no judgment. The Bible says there is no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. Pray about everything. Now look, me and Brandon would be hanging out, right? And, and almost every time we have had to help somebody jumpstart their car. You know, and you know, Brandon was like, yo, everybody. I was like, they're gonna get Jesus for real. You know what I'm saying? But so <laughs> so like every time we hung out, we, we had to jumpstart somebody's car. So then, you know, we, we help them because it's in our power. He go, he drives, pulls up next to them real quick, hops out. Puts, puts in your arm, and then now their, their car is jump started. Because it was in our power to help them. Now, if we have just, we just had two cables. Think about Jesus Christ, the one who has all the power in the world to help you. If he sees you in trouble, if he sees you in depression, if he sees you in anxiety, he wants to help you. But you have to call out, say, Jesus, help me. This, that. That's where he will get the glory. You know, he wants you to depend on him because if you don't depend on him, you're going to depend on this person. If you don't depend on him, you're going to depend on this drug. If you don't depend on him, you're going to depend on different things. So it's better to depend on God than to depend on, on anything else in this world. Pray about everything. Pray about everything and wait. Don't, don't be weary when you pray. So God, this is never happening. God, what is this? Even if it doesn't. We have, to, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Even if the thing we're praying for doesn't happen, what? We're just not going to believe in Jesus no more? You're going to lose the faith? Don't lose the faith. If you lose the faith, you lose everything. There's no reason to life when you lose the faith. So that's the, that's the second thing. So five steps to keep your peace. Number one, walk by the Spirit. Number two, pray about everything. Number three, keep your mind on Jesus. Keep your mind on Jesus. Do not make your problems a idol. You know, I, was, I just got out of a season, like, say, like, August. So that whole, like, probably, like, the last weeks of August, bro, I was like, <laughs> God was just doing something crazy. I'm like, yo, I, I didn't feel Jesus. I felt the prayers. I'm like, man, uh, my Savior, like, uh, but I kept the faith, and I just kept running back to him. There's seasons like these. But, you know, the problem was I was making my problems an idol, so if you're a believer in here, I'm going to use this example. You are walking on water, just like Peter. His eyes were on Jesus. But when he took his eyes off Jesus, he started to sink. It's the same thing. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And when you, and when you turn your eyes away, and you're looking at your problems like, God, all these problems I got, God, I don't even. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. Do not make your problems an idol. Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him. You will keep overflow in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you. Just like I said, don't make your problems an idol. You know, you're looking at these problems. You're looking like, God, how can I do this? God, what's going to happen if I do this? God, can you tell me my future? But you're taking your eyes off him right now. Listen, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, I promise you, the plan he has for you will unfold. Everybody in here, you have a purpose. No matter what your parents have said, you'll never be nothing, you know, or, or this person said this, or this happened in your life. Listen, your past doesn't depend on your, like, doesn't choose your future. Like, there's people that died, no, there's people that were born poor, but they died rich. So whatever happened in the past doesn't have to, to, to direct your future. 
You know, you can change that. It's, it, listen, the, 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 the decisions you made last year or three years ago lead you to right now. So the same way, any decision you make today will depend how your life will be in three years. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Some of you, we, some of us, we're going to leave here changed today in Jesus' name. Man, your life will be forever good. But some of us, we're just, you know, I see it's going to be there. You're going to hear it. You're going to think about it. But then your life doesn't completely change. And then you're going to have to go through different things, hardships, breakups. And then you're, you're just so confused. And then you're just so down. And then you're going to call out to Jesus and he will pick you up. He will pick you up. Nobody in here is too far gone. And for you guys, any friends, if they say, oh, man, that Jesus said, that's not for me. I'm too far gone. I'm like, no, never put your sins or anything you do over the blood of Jesus. You know, that, that, is, that is nothing over the blood of Jesus. So keep your minds on Jesus. That's number three. Keep your mind on Jesus. Don't put your mind on Because, you know, sometimes for like, like believers, you know, we're like, right when we become a believer, right when we, right when we come to Jesus, we're already looking for our wives. We're already looking for our husbands. Right when we come to Jesus, you already took your eyes off Jesus. Now you're going to have to go through that lesson first. But listen, learn from your lessons. Whatever lesson you go through, learn from them. You know, if you don't learn from it, it was a waste of time, kind of. But you have to learn from your lessons. That was number three. Keep your mind on Jesus. Number four, protect your peace. Protect your peace. Protect your peace. If you have peace, why would you let somebody else who has no peace, like, take your peace? They're talking crazy. Oh, look at that Jesus girl. Oh, look at that Jesus dude. Oh, he's always talking about Jesus. Like, yeah, I got peace. Do you got peace? Like, you got to go look over. Don't say that, though. You know, show them Jesus. Show them Jesus. Don't tell them that, you know. That's not a good representation of Christ. No, man. But you got to show them Jesus. Like, come, come see why I'm always happy. Come see why even in, the, in my worst times, you know, I have a smile and I will tell you about Jesus. Come see. Come see how I'm not bound by this. Come see how I can have fun without drinking or partying. Come see. Oh, how can they have fun without drinking? How can they have fun without partying? How can they have fun doing Jesus stuff? It doesn't come and see. So listen, protect your peace. There's friends that will come and mess with your peace. You know, there's friends that will come and mess with your peace. There's, there's men and women that will come and mess with your peace. You know, have wisdom. Ask Jesus, give me wisdom. Is this person for me? Is this person supposed to be in my life? Is this person good for me? Because if you don't say that, you're going to have to just go by your own understanding. And the Bible says, don't lean on your own understanding because you will fall. His understanding, he knows the future. He knows all things. Protect your peace. Don't let anything take your peace. All you have is your peace. All you have is Jesus. You know, but protect it. Because once you get some, let somebody get your peace, or once you let somebody come and mess with your peace and this and that, then you're all confused. God, what's going on? I shouldn't have let them in. And you're going to have to get back up. You know, we'll always get back up. Listen, you don't fail when you fall. You fail when you don't get back up. So get back up. No matter what happens, get back up. So that was number four. Protect your peace. And look, you have to kind of be like, you kind of be, you gotta kind of be selfish. You know, don't don't like someone's gonna come and try to take your peace, you're gonna be like, no, nah, like this is the peace right here. You're gonna be like, no, no, no. You know, but give your peace. Just like I said earlier, this whole thing is not about just receiving, it's about becoming. So God, if Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and he's giving you so much peace, you're receiving peace, now you start to become peace, now you give peace to everybody else, it just radiates out of you. Listen, I heard this thing on a, um, a sermon. The guy said that, so Jesus says that you are the light of the world. And listen, light don't talk. Light don't talk. Jesus, no, people should just look at you and see Jesus radiating out of you. They should just see your fruit. You know, light don't talk. These lights not talking like, hey, go ahead, bro. I know like, these lights not talking. You know, these lights not talking. Jesus calls you the light of the world. So you, Jesus should be seen inside of you, your everyday life, everything you do, everything you do. Protect your peace. And number five, the last one, pursue your peace. Pursue peace. You have to pursue peace. There's times where you're going to be faced with a, a, a decision for a Christ follower. If you're not a Christ follower, you just do whatever you want, but I pray you come to Jesus Christ. But for the Christ follower, there's going to be times and situations where, does everybody know there's an enemy out here? Raise your hand if you know there's an enemy. Tell your neighbor, that enemy not going to get me. <laughs> you got to... 
Jesus. Pursue your peace. Now, you have to pursue your peace. There's gonna be times where the enemy or just life, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be in a, in a situation where you have to pursue peace. There's gonna be decisions you have to make where you could either, you, you could either snap, you could go crazy, you could let your flesh take over, curse out somebody, or you can pursue peace. You have to pursue peace. Psalms 34, 14. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Turn from evil. There's a fight going on. They tell me crazy. You, oh, you can't touch me. You can't do this. You like, you want to see? No. Turn from evil and do good. They can call you all they want, but why would I let them take my peace? Why would I let them take my peace? And then I gotta go to and now I gotta go answer to God about that. Why I had to pursue peace, seek peace, and pursue it. In any argument, you know the devil loves to to. Uh, I'll talk about marriage people right now. If you're married, the devil likes to attack your attack your marriage. You know, but and you want to fight with this person. You want to fight with your wife or husband, or you want to fight with your boyfriend and girlfriend. But we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against spirits. So we, 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 so seek peace and pursue peace. Say, what can we do to fix this situation? Sometimes this can go crazy. Sometimes in your family, or sometimes. Seek peace and pursue it, and then protect your peace. Because maybe your parents, maybe your parents aren't saved, or maybe your friends aren't saved, and they always want to attack you about your faith. They always want to make fun of you about your face, face, faith. But if you have peace, protect your peace. Seek peace and pursue it. Don't let nobody take your peace. Hebrews twelve fourteen. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone. In this world, though, so I be, so sometimes we go to the gas station and stuff, and then I'm gonna just tell that person about Jesus, what y'all scared for? We just gonna tell that person about Jesus. And I walk up on them, I know crazy stuff, but they're like, ah! I'm like, well, I like, just love you, like, you know, but the way this world is wired, that is weird. It's weird for you to come up to somebody and tell them good things. They, everybody, if you walk up to somebody in a gas station, they're going to think you want to fight them. They're going to think you want to rob them. And that's how the world is. The devil is the god of this world. The devil is roaming around this world, making people do what they want. Because when your mind is governed by the flesh, you do what the flesh wants. Anything. You want something, you're going to get it. That's not God. God is self-control. You can either pace it with God or you can speed with the devil. Choose peace and pursue peace with everyone. Even if they don't understand. Your reward is great in heaven. We're not, we're not going hard for things down here on this earth. We're going hard for Jesus Christ, for souls to be saved. You know, and right now, I believe God is knocking on your heart. God is letting you know, like, you're like your heart is like, man, some of these things are true. You know, some of these things are true. But the part of you that wants to do what they want, the part of you that wants to just do what they want, and not listen to God, is like, nah, I don't even listen to that. Then the enemy comes and says, nah, I don't even listen to that. But listen to what your heart is saying. Like it's saying, give yourself to Jesus. Your heart is saying, he's saying some true stuff right there. Make a decision to give your life to Christ for real. And you will have peace that will surpass all understanding. I'm going to close with this. Some of us, we can say, Chris, um, I got peace right now. Like Chris, I, I, uh, you know, I play my game. You know, I don't really do no crazy stuff. You know, I got peace right now, Chris, without Jesus. Okay. But do you have peace in death? Do you have peace in death? When you die, do you have peace that when you see God, you'll be at good standing with Him. You're going to be good with Him face to face because we all will die one day. There's kids that have died and it sucks, but they didn't think they were going to die. Do you have peace in death? When you die, do you have peace in your death? Grace is such a beautiful word because it brings so much peace. Grace is such a beautiful word because it brings so much peace. By grace you are saved through faith, not of yourselves, so no one could boast. Grace is such a beautiful word. It's grace through faith. Grace is such a beautiful word. It's peaceful. Because whatever you've done in your life, it's not about what you've done. It's not about, because Jesus will take that away from you. Jesus will take away all those sins, your past life. Like I said, whatever your past is like, the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, says, you are a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. 
You are a new person in Christ. Like I said, this thing, this Jesus thing is all about putting off what we, and putting on something new. First, we're putting on this, what we think we are, what the world thinks we are, what the world thinks we should be. You're putting that off, and you're putting on what Jesus said about you. Jesus calls you redeemed. Jesus calls you forgiven. Jesus calls you a light of this world. Putting off and putting on something new. A new desires. But you have to feed that stuff. When you come to Jesus, some of us, we can, we can say... Chris, I came to Jesus, you know, but now I'm struggling. Why am I struggling? Why am I back into this thing? Why am I back into that thing? It's because you wasn't doing what you need to do. You have to pursue peace. You have to, pursue, you have to be led by the Spirit. Don't be governed by your flesh. Because we still have this flesh. We still have an enemy out there roaming. Like, go do this. But your friends, God will forgive you. And then you do it. And then he's like, God's never going to forgive you. So the enemy lies on both sides of the truth. He'll say, go do it. God will forgive you. Enjoy life. You're young. You go do it. Now he's saying, God will never forgive you. God does not want to hear from you. God does not care. Don't go back to him. I pray that you guys seek peace and pursue peace. You know, if, if anybody wants to talk to their leader about something, or, or you want to give your life to Christ, go talk to your leader. If not, I pray that Jesus does a work in your heart, and that what you heard today, you will take it, and further along the road, you will make a decision to think about your eternity, to have peace when you die. Because it's very serious. We all will see God face to face and he will tell you, what did you do with this life that I gave you? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for everybody here today, Lord. I pray right now that if they weren't listening, that they somehow, God, you can penetrate their heart and heart and change them. People that were listening, I pray that they they, they, they produce fruit from what I said, Lord. That they follow your word, Lord. I pray that they never look at the messenger, but they look at the message. It's not about the messenger, but it's about the message. And my message is you, Jesus Christ, dying and ri ri rising again to give us new life. I speak peace over everybody right now. And that, Father, that you just change their minds as they go out there. They just they walk out and their things are different. They want to seek peace. They want to pursue peace. They want to be governed by the spirit and not by the flesh. And that they can seek peace with everybody around them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys. You guys are dismissed.